I'm Dan Korneff, and I've spent my whole career trying to find that perfect balance between the analog color that we love without the hassle of a tape machine. So I built a plugin that takes the best parts of that and leaves the rest behind. It's called Chocolate Milk. This isn't tape emulation. It's what tape wishes it sounded like. This combines the best parts of analog tape in a way that you've never used it before. All in one plugin. Let's talk about Chocolate Milk. It's not a compressor. It's not an EQ. It's not a tape emulator. It's what we call a three-band gooderizer because everything you put through it sounds gooder. Let's start with what happens when you put it on your mix bus. Right away, you'll hear the bottom thicken, the mids tighten, and the top open up. At face value, it looks very simple, just three controls and a cow. But behind the scenes, there's a lot going on. Moo is a low frequency saturator that adds harmonic content to your bottom end. It's gonna keep it alive and punchy without pumping like a compressor. You can even change the character of the Moo between crunch, which is a really dense harmonic, or punch, which is more open feel. Squish handles the mids. It's a full featured compressor with ratio, attack, release, threshold, and it's tuned to stay musical. Froth is our high frequency enhancement and is based on a vintage Baxendall circuit, which is the same design as many classic hi-fi tone controls. You can add air, sparkle, tame harshness, even at extreme settings, it's extremely smooth. Flip it to the back panel, and this is where the real fun starts. You can drag the crossovers to adjust where each band starts and ends. So if you want a little more low mid in the moo, you can drag it up here, or if you need a little more range in the froth, you can just drag this back. It also has a phase flip for each band, a wet dry knob for parallel processing, and of course, a bunch of oversampling modes. All right, let's get our hands dirty. First up, drums. Here's the raw loop. Just listening back to the drums, I can already hear that we can use all the elements of this plugin to just bring it to life. The first thing I'm gonna do is start with the Moo, and I'm gonna dial in a bit of more saturation and thickness to the bottom end, but just on the kick drum. I just wanna localize it to the kick drum. I can dial in a bit of saturation here, and I'm gonna to flip to the back. One thing to note is that you can actually control every one of the knobs on the front from the back. So you turn the Moo here, and you're actually adjusting the threshold of the Moo here. So that way you don't have to keep flipping back and forth. If you just wanna keep it simple, just stay here and dial in some, some saturation and compression and, and, and air, and it sounds awesome. But if you wanna to get to the real nitty gritty detail, flip to the back, and now we can adjust everything from here without moving around. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to solo the low band and figure out the crossover point for where the kick drum is happening. All right, so as I bring this up, get more of that snare drum in there, but I just, just want the kick drum right around there. And let's figure out what kind of saturation I want here. Probably that one. Excellent. Cool, yeah, now it's got a little bit more excitement that's happening down there. The next thing that I wanna do is let's add some excitement to the snare drum. I'm gonna use the squish for that. Let's flip to the front and adjust the threshold to uh, get some moderate gain reduction every time that snare drum hits. Perfect. Now that's a little over the top, so we're starting to get like a smiley face curve in the frequency response, which doesn't sound very natural. So I'm gonna to flip to the back and use the makeup game to bring it back to reality here. Great, so every time that snare drum hits, it's knocking it back down, but that excitement expanding the uh, decay of that snare drum just makes it a bit more exciting. Yeah, already adds pop way more. Now, the last thing that I want to do is just add some air to those cymbals, and we'll do that with the froth. So I just want to adjust this crossover as well so I can get a little bit more of just the cymbal. And then we'll top it off with a little bit of bump on the uh, gain of the Moo channel. And that, that's it, that's exactly what I wanna do with this. Next up is bass. Now this is a mixture of a DI and an amp track, but I wanna see if I can squeeze a little bit more excitement out of it. Let's check it out. It's 
I'm just gonna get it in the ballpark with the stuff on the front and that's already helping out a bit. So let's fine tune it with the controls in the back. First thing I wanna do is one of my favorite tricks, which is use the phase inversion to creatively separate the low end of this bass from the clank of the bass. So I'm gonna play this and we'll flip the phase so you can hear what it sounds like. Now, since our crossover is at 230 hertz, we're losing a lot of low end that we really want. So what I'm going to do is slide this crossover around so I find that perfect point where the separation is very clear. So now we can hear there's a distinct low end and a distinct mid range. Next, let's try to tame down that peaky mid range on the bass. Now it's bigger, it's warmer, has a little bit more definition. It sounds like I ran it through a console and a bunch of other vintage stuff, but I just used one plugin. Finally, let's see what chocolate milk can do on the mix bus. Cool, just by throwing it on, we hear a little bit of something. I already like where this is going. I'm gonna dial in some stuff with the front controls and then head to the back to fine tune it. Let's fine tune this bottom end. Let's figure out a crossover point that makes sense. Great, so now I can get the rumble of the low end plus the bottom of that snare drum and make it bigger. I'm also gonna switch the moo character to punch because I want the song to be a little punchier. All right, let's fine tune this mid range. I wanna bring out a little more excitement in that snare drum and guitar, keep it nice and present without overbearing the mix. All right, so I dial in a nice amount of compression there, and then I'm gonna use the makeup gain to restore the frequency response. So now the mid-range is nice and loud, but not overbearing when the snare drum and percussion stuff hits. Finally, let's fine tune where the sparkle's happening on those cymbals. So I can come up a little bit more. And as a bonus last step, I'm gonna add a little more bottom end to make this mix thump. Now let's say B these. I mean, sounds great. I love this thing. It's got the bottom end, the roundness, it has the mid-range punch without being too aggressive. It has a sparkle that's pleasant and nice to listen to. That's everything that I want on my mix bus. So that's chocolate milk. It's not a tape emulator. It's everything that tape wishes it could have been. You can grab the free seven day fully functional demo at cornfaudio.com and check it out for yourself. If you found this helpful, hit like, subscribe, and drop a comment. I wanna know what is the first thing you're running through chocolate milk?